Okay, to begin with, the part of the test that starts tomorrow has complex numbers on it, and you better know I squared. What's I squared? Negative, negative 1. And when the negative 1 gets times by the 2, that makes that negative 2. Put it with the 6, and you get 4 plus 3i. Raise your hand if you knew that one. Okay, awesome. Then, if I just asked you what's i to the 8th minus i to the 9th, I'd like you to figure out for me i to the 8th minus i to the 9th. I'll pause for a second. Let me give that one a try. The test tomorrow... Uh, that starts tomorrow, has just one page of it is tomorrow, and it's the complex numbers part with a little bit of quadratics thrown in. As in, you'll have to be able to find roots of a quadratic and that kind of thing. Again, I'm going to pause where you figure out i to the 8th minus i to the 9th. My minus is a little high there. I'm going to bring it down there. So did you say i to the 8th was a whole bunch of i squareds? In fact, four of them. I could even say it this way. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I squared times I squared times I squared times I squared. And that's negative 1 to the 4th, which is a positive 1. And then this i to the 9th, that's easy to figure out because it's just one more i than this one. Right? So then that's an i. And then there's a minus in between them. And all it would take is to mess up that one sign and you'd get it wrong. But 1 minus i. Raise your hand if you had that one right. That's most of you. Good. Okay, so let's move on to your next uh, major topic. Quadratics. Obviously, there's a gajillion things you can do with a quadratic. Here is one, and I want you to just start by factoring it. This is in the process of review for your next big test, which is the cumulative test. And hint on this one, if you can factor it, you should because you'll get the answers, the roots, the solutions, the zeros, way faster than the quadratic formula. So factoring is awesome when it works. I'll pause for a moment. This one will factor. Okay. Uh, Did you factor out a 2? You might have thought you could factor out a 4, but you couldn't. If you didn't factor a 2 out of everything, then I would bet you have the answer wrong. You might think it's right. You might be like, no, I multiplied it out. It's right. It won't be factored all the way unless you got the 2 all the way out. Then I have 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. Then it factors again. 2x and x this time. And the only way to make a 9 work is a 3 and a 3, so that's nice. Then the only question becomes where the negative goes. Does it matter? Yes, it does. I'll just try it slapping them in here and here and see if I got lucky. Outside 6x, inside negative 3x, does that add up to a total of positive 3x? And it does. So I got lucky. There we go. If I had been the opposite, let's say I, I had put a plus here and a minus here, I would have got the opposite answer. I would have got negative 3x, and I'd have known, ooh, your signs are wrong. And I would have switched them to that. So there's your right answer. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Now, what does it tell me? What's the point of that? Well, first of all, it's factored form, and then I can get the roots. And some kids go, yeah, the roots are negative 3, which is right, and positive 3, which is not right. not right. You can't do that. What do you do to get this harder kind? You set that, what? 2x minus 3 equals 0. 2x equals 3. x equals 3 halves. So there'd be two answers. And what are they? Zero. The zeros. That's where it touches the x-axis. All right. Next thing. Let's use this same thing, because where it touches the x-axis, that's all nice, but it's not the answer to everything. Sometimes we don't care where it hits here. Sometimes we want the, well, there's a lot of things that we sometimes want. Sometimes we want the y-intercept, like where does it touch the y-axis? But that's not that hard to just look at this and say, the y-intercept is where what? x equals 0. Gone, gone, answer is negative 18. Does that make sense? So the y-intercept would have to be negative 18. All right? Next thing, you might be thinking, well, the way you drew that, it doesn't look like negative 18. It's just because there's a big stretch factor in here. Do you get that the stretch factor, when you go back to the beginning, was a 4? That means it's super stretched. And so it could be negative 18. In fact, it is. All right. That's the y-intercept. And the last thing is, can you find me the vertex of this puppy? Same equation. What's the vertex? On the vertex, if I were you, I would try 
let me think if I tell if complete the square is going to be brutal, I'll warn you, because it's going to have a fraction in it. You might be thinking, oh, I can take this 4 out, but you can't really take the 4 out of a 6. So don't try complete the square. What's the other way to find a vertex? Quadratic. No, not the quadratic. Negative b over 2a gives you the vertex. I'll pause for a minute while you figure out negative b over 2a. Here. So if you had negative b over 2a, you should have said negative 6 over 2 times a is 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 6 eighths, yep, that's it. And then how do you get the rest of it? You're going to want to stick it back in the equation. 4 times, I'm going to reduce 6 eighths, right? So 3 fourths. And the x here is 3 fourths again. And that's icky, but you'll have a calculator and you could get it. All right, so the vertex is at negative 3 fourths. That's this way. And then did this, what did this come out to be? Somebody with a calculator, what did you get for your rest of it? Negative 20-ish? Okay. So then do you get, if this is negative and negative, it's way down here somewhere. That's the vertex. Does this have a negative in front of the equation? No. So therefore, it's going this way. So that's generally what it looked like. Now, what can you get from the vertex? You can get the range. Everybody write down what you think the range is on this equation. Now that you know your vertex is negative 3 fourths comma negative 20 point something, try to find the range of that. What did you say for the range for this thing? I'm going to call on a random person. It's row 1, person 5. In the back corner, Mr. B. And we, I know this is a decimal, 20 point something, to infinity. And all it would take is something like that to make a, oops, I screwed up, the bracket around the negative 20. Because it touches negative 20. There. Raise your hand if you had the same one. Okay, good. That's right. That was a range. So vertex is handy for telling you a lot of things. Like, now i got to start telling you about... Uh, some of those test questions. Unfortunately, I can't record this because there's people that are uh, um, going to be taking the test still, and they can't, I don't want the recording out there telling how to do math problems from the test. Okay, so I'm going to have to pause the recording while I talk over questions from the test. So I'm pausing now. Okay, I'm on the recording again. For those of you that uh, uh, we just finished up correcting the uh, test, and I didn't want to let people see those answers on the recording, but now I'm about to do just a couple little things at the end uh, that anybody who needs the practice can do with me. So here's a couple last thoughts. Complete the square. If you had this one, complete the square is an important kind. If you already know how to complete the square, I'm okay because this is one of those review times where there's a lot of people a lot of places. If you totally get complete square and you always get them right, you can ignore this. If you know complete the square has gotten you before, you may want to do this one with me. All right, so your first step, you factor out something out of the 6x squared plus 8x. And you put baby in the corner. The problem when people have this wrong is they didn't put baby in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Sorry, this old movie reference there. And... Now I'm going to factor that and that. Okay, this one ended up being tougher than I thought. Because when I factor out, the only thing that comes out of both of them is this. Uh, and that's messed up because I have a 3 there. So as soon as you are trying to complete the square, you better... Notice, if you can't get the number off of here, because you can't factor it out of both of them, then you better go to a different method. So I can't complete the square. So immediately you fall back to vertex. All right. For those of you that want an actual complete the square question, I'll change it to this.
there, I know that one you can complete the square on. I'll pause for a second while you give it a try. So, I want to give you uh, uh, a little bit more help with, hold on one second. Here's the complete square problem that you were doing before. This 2 can come out, and you'd have x squared plus 4x, and then you'd do half and square. Half of 4 is 2, so I go 2 squared is 4 and 4. And now I'm primed to make the most common mistake on these, which is to forget to times that by 2. All right, so then I have 2 times x plus 2 squared. That's 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3 makes plus 5, and I have found my vertex. Negative 2 comma 5 is the vertex. Vertexes are handy for telling you things like the max height that the ball went, or if you want to sketch it and go, how many solutions are there? Because if you know it looks like this and it goes up, you could say, oh, this one isn't going to touch. No solutions. All right, yes. Hold on, just checking. I'm pretty sure this is a positive 2 times a po Oh, that is a negative 4 there. You're right. So then that's 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 minus 3 uh, is 8, 9, 10, negative 11. You are correct, sir. Thank you very much for catching that. And that makes this vertex here uh, negative 2, negative 11. Thank you. Okay, and if this is at negative 2, negative 11, that makes a big difference on this, too, because then when it goes like this, it does have roots. Okay, thanks for helping me catch my dumb little mistake on the negative. I, I warned everybody that's where people make the mistake, and then I made a mistake. It's a different mistake than most people make, but I forgot to make it negative out there. Okay, so there's an example of a complete the square. I cannot possibly review everything for you, and that's. I just wanted to have a few more review problems on my review video. Um, but from here, I'm going to refer you to all the reviews. If you want to find the reviews, go into my channel. If you go to servervideo.com, you'll be in my channel's feed, it's called. And in my channel, if you want to do a search on the little search bar, you can find any video you want in there. So I would just look back and at the most recent uh, videos produced and look for ones that say review for test. If you look at the review for test videos, that would help. Okay, that's all I got for you for today. Test is part gonna start of it is tomorrow, and then the rest of it's the next day.